You know, this just doesn't seem like their usual style, at least from what we learned in Myst. I mean, I'd expect Cirrus and Aginar to maybe be hoarding a pot of gold or something, not speaking to a bunch of folks like this. Well, maybe their deception was multi-layered and they're up to something else. Who knows? But one thing's for sure, this dude over here just doesn't seem all that happy about it. Maybe this is Savidra when he was younger, before he got all the long hair and wrinkles. Oh well, let's continue onward. We can go either right or left. And I think, at least for this once, I'll return to my Riven ways and go left. Whatever we do, though, it's a good thing that we're going down, because it looks like the route is also going down further as well. There's tons of plant life here. There's some rather distinct looking white flowers in the distance, but it doesn't look like we can access them from this path. They're probably on the other side where the right side leads. But here's something that looks familiar. It's another one of these pods. There we go. And for some reason the animation for the stingray just totally skipped right there. Well, he's still sadly swimming around in circles, but if you look carefully around here, it looks like this could be a viable new home for him. I mean, we've got another one of these basins here, kind of like the one that we saw him um, in originally when we first started our journey with him. And even more importantly, he's got a food source right here too, with more plant roots. Actually, wait a minute. These are the roots of the plant that the bird's in. And if you remember Savidro's laboratory on Jananan, we saw that providing electricity to it opens it up. So if we were to use the Stingray to do that, then we could solve two problems. He gets the food, and we free the bird. But just how are we going to open this thing up anyway? We really can't do it with our hands, as per usual. I guess we're just going to have to keep on searching. It looks like there's a path over here that we can get to, but it looks like that's on the other side, or just unreachable from here, so let's just keep going this way. Oh hey, this doesn't look like it belongs here. What's the matter, Atrus? Can't remember how things work? Yet you explained this class so well when we first spoke of it in Orion. I want Cirrus and Akinar to learn everything they can, Savidro. First from Amateria, Hidana, Voltaic, and finally from Orion. When my boys come to see your people, I want them to see Narayan's traditions and work so they can see how civilization can balance age. Do you know what they did when they finally came to us? You never came back. After class was over, you took your boys away. Certainly a very interesting message, and there's a few takeaways that we can glean from it. The first rather notable one is the part where Savidra listed all the ages that were part of the lesson course, minus Jananan. Idana, the one we're in right now, is one of them, but more importantly, Narayan was listed as the final age. That's rather significant because Narayan is the world that we've been focusing on that Savidro and Ag or excuse me, that Cirrus and Aginar plundered. So if it's part of the lesson course, then that kind of explains a lot. As Savidro noted there at the end, it sounds like Atrus um, had the boys go there when they were younger, and then when they started to pillage ages, then they decided to go back to places that they had visited before with civilizations in them. And I kind of got turned around, but I think this is the way to go. Oh, it's another one of these things, but there's no lamp around here. Uh-oh. Well, that can be a problem. Uh, I guess we've reached a dead end for now, so let's just head on back. Also, I gotta say, one of the most notable things about this game for me is that, at least when I was little, being able to move around while video was playing like that 
was kind of a big deal. I mean, with the first two Myst games, you had to stay fixed in a certain position while you watched the quick time movies and stuff. But with this game, with certain uh, animations, you could actually look around while something was playing, just like we were doing with that imager message. That's always pretty neat. Well, here's one of these flowers, but we can't really take a closer look at it. Hmm, this one seems a little closer. Can we... Ah, here we go. We can look in it here. Alright, well, we can look at a lot of different things here. And wait a minute, why does the leaf have sunlight from this angle? I mean, it has light on it, so it should open, right? Well, no matter what, it didn't have that light when we were there earlier, which is really bizarre. That's not very helpful to us now, so let's just go over here. You know, for a minute there, that almost looked like a person. Like, you can see, like, kind of a head here. And this is like a big hand that's opened up and stuff. And these are like his legs, and he's got a tail or something. But that's not our concern. We want to look at another flower. And this one is bathed in sunlight, which is pretty cool. Oh. We can kind of shine light like we were doing earlier with that uh, pod thing where we were popping the pod. So let's see if it works here. Sadly, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Maybe this just doesn't focus light like that other plant did. It just simply bounces it somewhere else. Wait, how is that possible? Maybe it's best that we don't think about this too hard. But we got some options here. Um, we can bounce it over here to this other plant, or we can go over here to this one. That's the one that we couldn't see earlier. Let's go over here to this one, because if we can bounce light off of that one, we can provide light to the tongue leaf. And I keep getting... here you go. I keep being unsure about where to enter the flower. But thankfully, this light is enough to make the leaf unfurl, so that is good news. I suppose the real question is, what is the purpose of this one? We really can't get into it to point it anywhere. But from here, we can actually see another one of these flowers over in this direction. So if this thing is fixed on that, then at least we know where it leads, so that's good news. Let's go back up for now. Yeah, no more light to this thing. Kind of sad. I keep thinking that I can go over there, but sadly you can't. Alright, let's take a look around. A lot of mushrooms here. Pretty cool. Alright, well we made it up to that area that we were looking at from that plant down there. And here we got a couple of them. We've got another one of these white ones, and we got another one of these orange ones, kind of like the one we used to pop the pod earlier. And this one is fixed on the pod. Interesting. So, I suppose all we really need to do is just make sure light gets in there in the first place, right? So, let's just go ahead and look at this one. And let's focus it on this guy, like that. And we should be good. All we need to do is just bounce light off of the first flower to that third one, and that one will send it off to the fourth one. And then it will send it into the orange one, that will send it off to the pod. Don't worry, Stingray. 
Feeding time is about to be here. This way. There we go. Wait a minute. Is that another one I just saw? Yeah, let's... Or wait. No, that's the same one. I'm getting turned around. Alright. Let's do this. There we go. All right, he's going to town on that plant. <laughs> Fly away, bird. Be free. Good stuff. Glad we got that done. But now where do we go? I mean, what do we accomplish by doing that exactly? The last puzzle I can understand because it allowed us access to this, but... What are we really doing by freeing the bird? Well, I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out. The real question is where we can go next. I mean, for all we can see, that seems to be a dead end. But maybe we missed something over here. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we go back and shine some light on that tongue leaf again? Before we just start walking off somewhere with no clue about where to go. Thankfully we don't actually have to go back to that leaf or that flower since we know that's pointed at the leaf. So that's good news. And it's this one. I keep going a little too far when I get up there to the painting area. Well, one thing's for sure, we now have seen what Savitra was uh, hopefully talking about when he talked about painting stuff in his journal. So, I'm assuming that we can expect to see paintings on the other Lesson Ages as well. So let's see, there's nothing more up here, right? Nope. Just this dead end. But maybe there's something we missed on the way. Let's see here. Yeah, that le that leads up there. Ah, here we go. There are two paths that go through here. There's one over here that we haven't really looked at yet. And you want to know what's even more devious? If I can find it. Yeah, this stuff. You wouldn't really see these journal pages unless you really turned around and checked them out. So let's take a look at them. The book sits on the floor of the tusk, its swirling panel reaching tentacle-like arms out to grab me. I want to close my eyes to shut out these false illusions before they suck me into the fog. I do not want those swirling arms to touch me. Why? Why am I so afraid of this book? I want to remember. I must. I think... I think this man may have come to our village. But he was younger then. Dark-haired. Tall. Wearing those same strange flowing brown robes. He carried a book in his hands, then too, and he's always using it. Always writing down notes. His eyes are covered by thick glasses, but his face is warm and friendly. He tells me his name. He says it's Atrus. I remember now. His name is Atrus. Atrus says he's come to our village from a faraway place because he wanted to learn about the tree. He says he'll only stay a while. Doesn't want to stop our endless labors. He says he wants to help if he will let him. Oh, Tamara. Why did we let him? Keep writing, Savidro. Write everything down. This Atrus stayed with us for months. I taught him how to trim the delicate lattice roots, how to splice old and new growths together so the walls of our houses will grow strong. I tell him the traditions of the weave, how by using the spores to support the growing branches, we keep the lattice tree alive. He wants to learn everything I know. 
He wants Narayan to survive. I take him to the rift, to where the sea flows through gaps in the world. Steam flows up from the waterfall. The puffer spores are ready to take flight. We stand in the shadows of dusk and watch the spores begin to rise. He says they look like pearls against the sky. Then he points to one of the spores. It's smaller than the rest, small enough to fit the niche we'd woven into the branches that morning. Its skin is milky white with just the faintest touch of pink. That one, Atrus said. That should support your new daughter's room perfectly, I think. I remember I nodded. Then I raised my pipe and played. Atrus stood beside me holding his breath as my song drew the hollow spore in close. As soon as it was near, he threw the net and dragged it in. This is what I remember. This is why I said he could send me his sons. Very interesting journal entry that gives us a little more detail about how Atrus and Savidro first met, as well as Narayan itself and some of the traditions there. Oh hey, this looks familiar. It's another one of these swing vines. I guess we can kind of use it as a foothold too, in a way. Sadly, we really can't see our feet to really understand how that works, but I guess you get the basic idea. 